Matthew 24 and verse 9 and 10 says to us, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and he shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So when you're doing things for God, you're abiding by his will, his guidance, his direction, then you can expect to be afflicted, to be hated, to be ridiculed, to be destroyed in the physical, but that should not be a deterrent because you should not fear those who are able to destroy this physical body, but fear him who is able to destroy both body and soul. And verse 10 of this passage indicates to us, then it says, And then shall many be offered, and shall betray one another, and shall be hated, or shall hate one another. So many persons will come under pressure, and when they are under pressure, their natural inclination for survival will put them in a position where they will choose to self-preserve, to preserve themselves at the expense of someone else. So you will have to be mindful of these type of individual. They will turn on you in the wink of an eye. Remember, not everyone who claims to be a follower of Christ is a Christian. And when you can understand that concept, you will realize that that is the premise under which two individuals going to the same church, listening to the same scripture, sharing in the same alleged belief system, enjoying similar things, can be unequal in their direction. Any relationship that you engage in with the intention to marry, you must ensure that it is built on the foundation which is not only right, but that foundation which is righteous. In having a successful marriage, there is a need for compatibility in various areas, but most importantly, in the area of spirituality and connection to the vine that is divine. There are two spiritual forces that exist in this world that of the evil spirit of Satan, which tends to pull people, have them having an affinity to doing that which is wrong. And then we have the Holy Spirit of God, which normally tells people softly to do that which is not only right, but that which is righteous. If you have two partners who possesses opposite spirit living together, Conflict is certain and chaos is sure because what we're going to be experiencing is that truth and error will be trying their very best to coexist. But truth cannot live comfortable with error. They cannot be happy together. The marrying of them by any religious minister is a failure on the ministry's part. Not only that, it is setting up these individuals to fail in their relationship. So before they even had a chance to start a relationship that is reflective of the goodness of God, they were doomed for failure. The marrying of them is failure as it's plastered on the pages from Genesis to and through Revelation. So we are seeing that when you are unequally yoked, when you take things out of season, when you do things that conflicts with that which is right and righteous, you are inevitably setting yourself up for destruction, for Dalmatian, for the separation that comes with uh, having a situation where you are not uh, equally 
intertwined. We are the oneness that should be present in your relationship is absent. And we do not want you to have to experience that. A quick question that many persons may ask is, who are the unbeliever or who are the non-believer? If you turn your attention now to 1 John 3 and verse 2, it explains it clearly to us. So we are going to just clear the air about who are the non-believers. So the passage of scripture reads to us, it says, Beloved, now are we sons of of God and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is so when you are from a heritage a lineage you are a reflection of your parents you are a reflection of your ancestors you are a reflection of god's goodness but you have to decide for yourself what manifestation of reflection do you want to be because you can be from a royal seed but not know that you are royalty and if you don't know that you are royalty you will act as though you are a commonality and we do not want you to fall in the traps of such a malpractice first john 3 and verse 5 says and he know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin so if someone is disconnected from their maker someone is disconnected from their king if someone is disconnected from the design of uh, their creator then it means that there is going to be destruction it means that there is going to be disorder it means that there is going to be a demolition of whatever structural foundation could have been set up because it was not built on the right principles and when the principles are not in alignment we cannot expect the longevity that is promised because we are operating outside of the natural design so now you're understanding a little clearer who the unbelievers are. The unbelievers in essence are persons who do not believe in the word of God as it is presented. Persons who have conflicting thoughts and ideology. Persons who do not believe in the creator. Persons who have ideas of the world just falling into existence Persons who believe that two masses of energy in time and space and matter come together uh, independently without any external intervention, those are unbelievers. Let us move to James 4 and verse 17 and let us dig a little deeper to see what the word of God has to present to us. It says to us, therefore, to him that know it to do good and do it it not, to him it is sin. So, this is very deep. If you know the right and you choose not to do the right, that there is a misrepresentation, that there is sinful that there is wrong you will be held accountable when you know the right and do the wrong you cannot be like the politician because this is not politics where you have to uh, propagate the ideology of politics we are not here to trick or deceive anyone we are here to give people the guidance that they so deserve so they have a fighting chance of a relationship that is meaningful that is significant and that can produce the fruits of prosperity that can be used to show the goodness of god's glory 
as earth is populated for him. If you find value, please don't forget to subscribe to this content as we will continue our teaching exercise. And if you believe that this is something that you like to hear, please hit that like button. And don't forget to share it with a friend that needs to hear this matter. Let us get into it a little deeper as we're going to be moving now to 1 John 3 and verse 7. 